Well, hello everyone. Um, it's so good to have you all here today. Um, like Ms. Reagan said, my name is Cassie, um, and I am the education specialist over at Grandfather Mountain. So welcome, and thank you all for getting up on this really warm morning to join me here. Um, it's just beautiful and warm and sunny out. Um, but like I said, I usually work with first, second, third graders, so this is great to have you all here today. Um, like Ms. Reagan said, I've been all over the country, um, pretty recent to North Carolina, about four years or so in Western North Carolina. Um, so I've been out West in Wyoming, in Colorado, and Utah, um, and then spent a good bit of time in California. So I'm familiar with the grizzly bear population, had many encounters with grizzlies. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so had a few encounters with black bears in western Pennsylvania, and then moved down to Black Mountain, North Carolina, and had resident black bears in my yard all the time. Mm -hmm. um, to grandfather, which, um, let me see, Raise your hand if you feel comfortable. Have you all been to Grandfather Mountain before? Okay, cool, awesome. So a familiar place for us all. Um, but I wanna hear from you all, so I'll go over a few things today and we'll talk. Um, but if anyone feels comfortable or would like to share, what are your expectations for today? Um, why did you sign up for this presentation? What are you expecting from me and expecting to learn today or just um, become more knowledgeable about? Yeah. Well, I have uh, black bears in my neighborhood. Okay. They get into the garbage yes, and so on. They seem to know what day garbage day is. <laughs> and we'll talk about that, yes. <laughs> But I just, I love them. I had one close encounter with them um, in my backyard when I came around the corner and I didn't know they were there. And they, of course, ran. Yes. Yeah. on me. But I, I love them. I think they have such sweet faces. And yeah. <laughs> I know. If I could have brought a bear today instead of myself, that would have been way more um, enjoyable to stare at um, because of their cuteness. Okay, so yeah, we'll talk about, and we'll talk about how humans and bears can coexist um, peacefully together and not turn the corner and be surprised at vice versa. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Expectations? Yeah. I just, uh, I love bears. I love the bears around here. Um, I just want to know, I have a lot of friends that hunt bears. I'm not, yes, they do what they do. I'm not going to throw about mm -hmm. it. But I just want to know how North Carolina or whoever is doing bear management of the population. Because it is getting larger, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what the goals are. Perfect. And yes, the bear population, I'll expand more on that, but has fluctuated throughout the years. Perfect. Oh, y'all are such good audience members <laughs> raising your hands. <laughs> You're spoiling me. Um, either or, go ahead. I'm interested in, in the hibernation habits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, <laughs> Great, I'm glad you all are bringing these up because we will discuss some of those. Perfect. Um, well, I've said that the high point of my grandchildren's childhood was seeing a bear out my dining room window, but I didn't see it. <laughs> so, Virginia, what I'm hearing is your, your children saw it, but you never saw it? I never saw it, but at the time, I turned off the stove and got to where they were and the dog was going crazy. <laughs> All right, so I will try to get a bear to you, if not now, but when you move to, is it Greensboro? Okay, um, we'll try to make that happen. And yes, yeah, thank you so much, go ahead. Um, yes, I'm in the North Carolina a little over a year, and I was here in Blowing Rock, now I'm in Sugar Mountain. And I saw them over here, or one, mm -hmm. from a little distance. And um, now I know that they're over there where I am. I've seen people with pictures on the phone mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I'm just, I'm originally from Florida, and I've never lived somewhere where 
for a length of time where there is some there. So it's new to me, and I was curious about the hibernation too, because a couple months ago was when I started hearing a lot of talk about in the fall mm -hmm. bears, and they see them at the garbage thing, and um, and now I don't hear anyone talking about them. I'm thinking like, are they? Are they like buried down? Are they hibernating right now under the snow? I mean, I'm just wondering about it. You know? They're outside Virginia's window. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Those are all awesome. Does anyone else like to share before um, we get started? Yes, sir. Uh, the life cycle of the bears, mm -hmm. especially with the changes in climate and that sort of thing. What, what's affecting them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. When I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, changes in climate and how that's affecting the bear population. Absolutely, can touch some on that as well. Awesome. Um, so basically, hopefully I can touch on some of y'all's questions today. If I don't, um, or if I don't know all the details, what I can do is get some of that information from the habitat keepers back at Grandfather Mountain. And if y'all feel comfortable with sending me your email, I can provide more information to you later. Um, just in case I don't know all the facts um, because I don't want to give you any false information. Um, but today we are going to look at the history of black bears, the populations, how they've increased and decreased throughout time. Um, we are going to take a look at this photogenic um, bear. Is anyone familiar with Mildred from Grandfather? Um, we will talk about Mildred and how by far she is the most famous item on Grandfather, um, to, my, to my belief. Um, so black bears, black bears history. So these two pictures are of Mildred, which we will discuss in a minute. But there are three types of black bears living in North Carolina. Can anyone yell out one? And North, excuse me, not North Carolina, North America. Grizzlies, bears, or bears? Bears, sorry, oh, Grizzlies. Grizzlies. Brown. Polar, brown, and? Black. Black bears, absolutely. So there are three species living in North America. Um, the brown bear, also known as a grizzly, um, known as a Kodiak bear, which we'll talk about the black bear, which we are going to be focusing on, and the polar bear as well. So I recognize that this coloration might be hard to see from where you all are at. Um, but just to talk a little bit about black bears, currently the recent studies have shown there are about 600,000 black bears in North America and 300,000 in the United States, and about 20,000 black bears in North Carolina. Now, North Carolina has the densest population of black bears out on the coast, um, and it is about um, 8,000 black bears in this population on the coast, so highly dense population of black bears. Um, most of the bears in North Carolina um, live in the, on the coastal region or in the mountain region, very few in the central Piedmont area of North Carolina. And we'll talk about some reasons from their diet and why they live in these locations. Um, excuse me. But as of recent study, there are 41 out of the 50 states have a breeding pair of black bears in them. So they can be found all over the place. The states that do not have breeding black bears, while they might have sightings, I'll list them out really quickly, but are Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska, and I found this quite surprising, but North and South Dakota as well, uh, which I found kind of surprising. Um, there are bear sightings in those states, but no successful breeding pairs of black bear as far as anyone is um, no, known right now. Um, just for some comparisons, 
Um, the brown bears are also known as the grizzly bears. Um, compared to the black bears, there's about 55,000 in North America. Um, 25,000 of that population is in Western Canada, and about 30,000 is in, um, excuse me, in the U.S., mostly in Alaska, and there's some in other states as well, but the population is highly concentrated in Alaska. Um, polar bears, about 22 to 31,000, uh, depending on the sea ice um, with the climate change as well. Um, and there's about 5,000 roughly living in Alaska. So just for some comparison with numbers, numbers are big wide spans that are hard to wrap our head around, um, for myself at least. But the population of black bears, how it has fluctuated throughout the years, black bears used to be very abundant. Um, but like other species of animals, and maybe we'll have some time to talk about those, but for other species and the black bears, their population started to decline. Um, in the mid-1900s, individuals were seeking out black bears and killing them to protect their livestock, their crops, their family. Um, so hunting them back in the 1900s, maybe similar today for some families, may be different um, depending on the individual. Black bears also started losing their habitat due to clear cutting and agriculture as well. And then something else, maybe you all can help me out, but in the 1920s, something else came through um, that decreased the black bear population. Does anyone have any idea what happened in the environment in the 1920s. Let me see, I know Miss Jennifer knows in the back, possibly. I'm just guessing. Um, I'm guessing maybe the chestnut blight? The chestnut blight, uh-huh. So the chestnut is one of the most fat-producing nuts for the black bears. So their diet really decreased in the 1920s. Um, hence reducing their population. So um, individuals came together and said, we have to do something. And yes, we had to do something. Um, the population was declining as seen in other animals like the bald eagle, the elk population, etc. cetera. Um, so they came together with bear sanctuaries and scientific management were able to bring the black bear population back to where it's at currently. Um, so with that being said, the population bounced back and let me see, is anyone familiar with Hugh Morton by chance? Grandfather Mountain. So Mr. Hugh Morton, let me see if I have a picture of him with one of his bears. He was an advocate for conservation. Um, and with the black bear population declining, can anyone guess what Mr. Morton did? Breeding black bears. Started breeding black bears, absolutely. So Mr. Morton, um, there he is. <laughs> um, Mr. Morton, being the conservationist as he was, he went to the Atlantic Zoo and he got two black bears in 1968. Mildred being one of the black bears, and he also got a male black bear to bring back to Grandfather Mountain. Now, if you're not aware, Hugh Morton was the individual with the insight to build the bridge and establish Grandfather Mountain. Um, so, Mr. Morton brought Mildred back. Um, with the other bear to breed them on Grandfather Mountain. Now, after breeding these black bears, they were supposed to be released into the wild, right? Um, so, like Mr. Morton, he liked everything to be very elaborate, um, made sure people could see what was going on. 
So he invited um, Arthur Smith. Anyone familiar with the Arthur Smith show? All right. Um, to announce his release. So Arthur Smith was announcing their release and the male, when they were released back into the wild, the male black bear took off. <laughs> right, like that was supposed to happen. Um, yes, successful bear back into the environment. Does anyone have any idea what Mildred did? She, she, hung out. she hung out, right? She not only hung out, but this is according to some information. I do not have firsthand um, accounts of this, <laughs> but um, Arthur's brother, Ralph, was also at the release. So I want you all to imagine I'm, I'm Ralph. I don't even know what Ralph looks like, um, but I'm sure I'm pretty similar. So when Arthur was um, talking about the release, Mildred came up and started licking Ralph's shoe, like nonstop wow. licking. Um, so if you're at grandfather, just picture it like this. We have one bear up there named Flower, always has her tongue out. I don't know, maybe some of you have noticed that while you're up there, she's just like this. Um, but licking Ralph's shoe and Ralph went to shoo Mildred away, not shoo, but shoo Mildred away, and um, he just yelled out the name Mildred, and hence that's why she got the name Mildred um, through an account at Grandfather. Whether it's 100% accurate, I don't know, but I do like the story and appreciate this story. Now, Mildred, this is another account that I'm not 100% sure. It was stories passed down. But Mildred wasn't released, did it not go like the male bear for one reason they think. While she was at the Atlantic Zoo, they thought that the um, office staff at the zoo during their lunch break would come down and give Mildred some snacks. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I feel her. If someone came down on their break and constantly gave me some snacks, I would hang out as well. So she got more habituated to the area. Um, so, great, we have Mildred, successful breeding pair. We have Mildred. <laughs> um, and we have Mildred everywhere, okay? Um, so Mildred, if you can imagine being at Grandfather today, and before you cross the bridge, if this was um, the security person on the bridge um, coming by, um, she was all over Grandfather. Um, I encourage you all after I'm done speaking to come up, I'll obviously put my mask back on, but to look at some of these pictures up close. Um, but Mildred was everywhere on the mountain. She even was the first one to greet you when you were on the mountain. Um, I can't imagine, but... So Mr. Morton decided Mildred's hanging out. Um, so in 1973, Mr. Morton built a habitat for Mildred, um, a two-acre habitat on Grandfather Mountain. Um, this is an image right here of the habitat. The habitat is still at Grandfather Mountain. And while you overlook the habitat while you are all there next time, the next time you all come visit, if it's on a really clear day from that habitat, you can see Charlotte from that habitat, um, which is incredible. The view is incredible. And it's a huge space for these bears. Um, breeding on Grandfather Mountain, um, Stopped in about 2000, around the 2000s because the population bounced back. There was no need to breed any more black bears <coughs> on the mountain. But currently, when you come join us again, we do have six black bears on the mountain. Kodiak, Flower, Smokey, Yanni, Carolina, and Fannie Mae. Um, so I encourage you all to come, come check those out um, in their habitats as well. So the coloration, um, this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, 
myself included, um, but just yell it out. What color are black bears? Black. 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 Yes, they are black. That's one. Anything else? Like brown. Brown, absolutely. White. White, all different colors. Um, so black bears, they have many different colorations, and I'm actually going to read them off because there's a few. There's black, blue black, dark brown, brown, cinnamon, and even white color. It kind of reminds me when you're going shopping and you have all your color options. <laughs> Um, now, demographically, on east of the plains, most of the species black bears are the black coloration. Um, in the west, about half of the coloration are browns, blondes, and a cinnamon color. Um, does anyone have any idea why their coloration might differ from out west versus the east? Food. So I hear camouflage, food, food, inbreeding, inbreeding, okay. habitat. Hab habitat. These are all all factors in it. Um, one of the biggest factors is um, the light color helps reduce heat stress for the black bears, with the west being more open and vast compared to the east coast being more forested. That's what scientists think. Um, obviously, we don't know 100%, but um, to reduce that heat stress. Um, so, looking up here, if you notice, make sure your left up here, um, the white colored bear. Um, this bear is not albino. Um, while it appears to be albino, it still has the brown eyes and the brown muzzle as well. Um, this bear has a few different types of names. Um, the most common is Kermode. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If anyone has heard it differently, please let me know. K-E-R-M-O-D-E. -E. It was named after the scientist um, who discovered it in 1924, Francis Kermode. He was the first director of the Royal British Columbia Museum. Um, now, this coloration said to evolve around 10,000 BC when the coastal population was cut off from the interior population. Um, very few of this coloration of bear. It's also known as the ghost bear or the spirit bear from the first people um, who named it that as well. Um, if you saw this bear versus a polar bear um, in the wild, polar bears are much larger um, in general than black bears. So either the coloration is similar, but size-wise, obviously you're not going to be try to get too close. You're like, ah, you're that karma bear that uh, that lady talked about um, versus the polar bear. But um, someone mentioned camouflage earlier, correct? Okay. Um, for our bears right here, the blue, gray, um, blue, black bears, um, these are found in southeast Alaska, and they adapted to that color to blend into the glacial environment in Alaska. Um, and then in the top right corner, this is actually one of the bears on Grandfather Mountain. Um, his name is Cody Kodiak. Um, and he is the only cinnamon colored bear on the mountain and the only male bear on the mountain as well. Um, now, I started on the mountain in June and from what I am aware, Cody was a lot darker this summer. I don't know, Stuart also spends a lot of time on the mountain, I don't know if you wanna talk, but not as cinnamon as colored as he normally is. Um, I had a hard time telling him, you know, other than his size, mm -hmm. his coloration was more like all the females there, which are really black. Yeah. This year, he had, had to wait till the sun hit him just right to be able to see that he was as grown as he did. Yeah. So if you look on grand, grandfathers back through their photos, I've only seen Cody as like, if I was in the habitat, I'd be like, that, 
that's a black bear. Um, the cinnamon color wasn't coming out as much. Um, Last year, he looked like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. He, looked, he looked like that. Mm -hmm. So, why? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't know if we do know why that coloration um, changed. Maybe he's growing. Is that cold or is that gray? That could be. Um, or he's maybe trying to pick up one of the ladies on the mountain um, who he has a pool to choose from. Um, uh, I have a question. Oh, yeah. How do you know he's the only male on the mountain? Um, I have not done the research personally, um, but just um, scientific. There aren't any wild ones on the mountain? Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. These are the ones in Habitat. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. um, no, no, no. And to, we'll talk about, but it's hard if you're not, if you're out there and you only see one bear, is it hard to differentiate between a male and a female? Yes, if they're standing by each other, the male bear is going to be larger. They average about 250 pounds versus a female about 150. And that depends on seasonal changes, feeding after they come out of the den, et cetera. But males are um, generally larger. All right, you ready to come back to your table question? <laughs> All right, um, so black bear versus brown, grizzly, Kodiak bear. Um, before we talk about the different features of these bears, um, just talk real quickly about brown, grizzly, and Kodiak. Um, all subspecies, but depending on the location, um, I kind of think of it like mountain lions, cougars, puma type deal. My brain, okay, same thing, just depends where they're at. Brown bears are, that are coastal bears with the food, um, food on the coast. Grizzly, they're cut off from that coastal food source um, and have the inland food source. And then Kodiak, um, Kodiak bears are on the Kodiak Island um, of Alaska. Um, they were cut off from their population of the brown bears, uh, I believe about 12,000 years ago. Um, so they have adapted a little differently as well based on their food source. Um, so some different differences between black bear and grizzly or brown bear. First of all, I really hope that none of you get um, close enough to be able to be like, yeah, oh, that makes sense. I got it. Um, I would never, never wish that upon any of you um, unless it's out your window and you're in a safe, safe uh, but if you notice the big um, one that's easily identifiable, still difficult, if you notice their rears right here and their shoulder hump. So on grizzly bears, their shoulder hump is above their um, rear end versus a black bear, they lack that shoulder hump and their rear is above their shoulders. So while they're on all fours, if you notice that, you can tell the difference um, without the coloration. Um, another giveaway are their ears. If you notice, the black bears have a more elongated ear, more oval-like, versus the grizzly bears have kind of a short, rounder ear as well. Um, so that's one way you can tell now, if you're out exploring and you become along a track, this is where you get really scientific and get down low and you're like a Tom Brown looking at the tracks and investigating. Um, with their tracks, grizzly bears, their claws are about two to four inches. Um, and then the black bear, is about two inch, less than two inches with their claws. Um, however, in their tracks, more than likely you won't see the black bear's claws in the tracks. Um, another identification um, for the black bear, their toes right here, 
they're further separated apart versus the grizzlies are closer together. Um, that's one, one way if you don't see the bear but want to figure out what's in your neighborhood. If we uh, see this in Blowing Rock, I think we're in some trouble. That goes beyond science and I cannot figure that one out. Um, so, um, but another thing, grizzlies are, tend to be larger than black bears. When on all fours, um, grizzly bears stand from their shoulder about three to five feet. So I'm about, depending on the day, like five, six. Um, so if you can imagine on their shoulders standing three to five feet. Mm -hmm. uh, no, <laughs> yeah, we don't even imagine. But let's think about the cute bears we see outside. Or I think they're cute. Um, the black bears, they stand about two and a half to three feet, um, which is a little more. Uh, so does that help with that question to identify the differences? Okay. And like I said, on the East Coast, we're just looking at black bears. Yeah. Is there a difference in their, between the two types, in their intelligence or their temperament? That's a good question. So intelligence, all bears are extremely intelligent. Um, aggressive wise, um, grizzly bears tend to be more aggressive than black bears. Black bears are solitary animals unless they're with their cubs. Um, and we'll talk about that to coexist, but usually black bears, if you make yourself big, make a lot of noise, really easy for me, um, they'll tend to just go away. Um, and grizzly bears um, are more aggressive and the reason why, I'm not sure if it's just their location or genetically if there's something that plays a role in that, but black bears are, have a better temperament than grizzlies. And But that's not to say um, you might meet a really nice grizzly. <laughs> you might meet a non-really nice black bear um, as well. Does that help? Yeah. All right, y'all ready for my favorite part of the segment? All right, this is Black Bear Dating Profile 101. <laughs> uh, so our black bears on the mountain like long, nice um, days at the pool followed by sunbathing on the rocks and like to end their day taking nice long walks in the field. Um, those are all black bears on Grandfather, in the habitats on Grandfather Mountain. Um, so like I said before, seasonally dependent, um, female bears weigh on average about 150 pounds. Male bears on average weigh 250 pounds, um, but seasonally dependent um, when they're going into hibernation or turf war, which we'll talk about. Um, obviously, they're bumping out, bumping their weight up um, when they come out um, in the spring. Um, obviously, their weight has dropped. Complete opposite to me. I don't know what happens. Um, but the largest known black bear was actually located in 1998 in North Carolina. Do we have anyone want to throw out some ideas of how much that black bear weighed? 350? 450? 400. 450? 450. Woo! Up from 750. Uh -huh. So, 880 pounds um, found on the coast of North Carolina. Um, and the reasons why that bear got so large, they believed, um, was because of the agriculture on the East Coast. They had a lot of um, foods like wheat, corn, and peanuts this bear was munching on. And then because of the temperatures on the coast, they didn't have to go into that um, kind of reduced state of lowering their heart rate so they could come out and forage more often. So this black bear is just on a 
Netflix, uh, HBO binge, um, eating binge. What did they end up doing with it? Um, I don't know. I don't know if they did anything with it, just other than recorded the weight. But since, I mean, since 1998, there has been no other bear that has broken that record at all. Um, as well, now bears in the wild, they typically live, I'm sorry, I'll come right back, about 20, 25, depending on different factors um, in the wild. But I can't. <laughs> 880 pounds, that's a, a lot to move around. <laughs> Go ahead. How do you weigh a bear? How do you weigh Well, um, so I actually, I'm not part of the Habitats team, but I was given the opportunity on Grandfather one day to help weigh a bear. Um, and it's really easy. You just tell them to go on the scale and. <laughs> um, but we were. This is a side. We were all super excited. We're like, it's bear weighing day. Um, and I'm like, look at these strong arms. I'm gonna lift that bear. Um, so they actually um, put the bear in a. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A sleep state, um, but not hibernation. They put it to sleep, um, and then. When it fell over, it was on a mat. And then me, as strong as I am, came. Now we had um, our whole maintenance team and our habitat crew um, pick up the um, blanket that the bear was on and put it on a scale um, that the vet had. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to weigh it, but that is, um, as far as I know, <laughs> one way to weigh a bear. Um, that's a great question. Um, so I. Someone, it might have been you, sir, was think, asking earlier about their um, life cycles with seasonal changes and such like sure. that. Um, so let me touch on the life cycle a little, and then we'll talk about like hibernation and such like that. Um, if anything I don't cover, let me know, and I can see if I can answer those questions. If not, I'll get back to you. Um, so the female bears get on the dating website and uh, <laughs> May or June um, start start looking for start looking for a bear to mate with. Um, and when they are in the pregnancy, it lasts about seven months, um, and they make sure they eat a lot during that time, not just because they're about to den up, but to sustain the pregnancy. Um, the female bears, they do have their cubs in the den with them in around January. Um, and when the cubs come out, they're about the size of a potato. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so it's right now in January that the cubs are being born? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'll, go ahead. No. No, go ahead. I just want to know. Is it the female that's the initiator? She gets to pick who she wants to mate with. You said that female starts on the waiting side, the dating side. She's looking for a man. So um, is that how it goes? Because like a lot of times it's the male that's pursuing. It's usually the males pursuing. Okay, um, okay. So she's just giving. Yeah, sorry. I guess that was kind of misleading. Yeah, okay. All right, that's all right. That's um, okay. But they don't generally, um, and someone who's different police for you know, they don't have the same mating pair um, mm -hmm. throughout life. Um, but yes. So they come out as potatoes mm -hmm. and they turn into the and then they start eating potatoes and turn into an 880 pound bear. Um, but they are born in the den with their mom. Um, so this is just a photo. I believe it's Mildred um, in a den on grandfather. Um, but in the den, they are nursed. The mom wakes up, um, nurses them, takes care of them. And then about two to three months, so in March, they'll come out of the den with their mother, weighing about four to six pounds at that point. Um, and then the cubs generally stay with their mom. Um, until about 16 to 18 months when um, the female bear lets them go on their own for a chance of finding a mate and having their own family in the wild. Um, climate 
seasonal changes with the bears. Um, hibernation versus, this word always comes out of my mouth funny, torpor, T-O-R-P-O-R, torpor. For some reason, it just doesn't come out correctly. Um, but some animals truly do hibernate, where they go into a voluntary, um, like hard, steady sleep. Torpor is involuntary, um, but it's when the animal slows their heart rate, um, their metabolic slows their heart rate and their breathing, and their metabolic rate decreases as well. Um, and then there's a slight decrease in their body temperatures as well. But this is not a true hibernation, um, and that's what a lot of bears are currently doing with, um, with the seasonal changes. Um, so they can come out of the state to um, eat to nurse their young, um, and they don't stay in this state. They go involuntary into turf war to save what they have fueled up on, um, and they still dead. So at Grandfather Mountain, it's, it's real fun because you're sitting in the office, and you'll hear the Habitats team say, Cody's awake, because <laughs> they see his tracks in the snow. Um, but when they're in their habitat, the bears do den. Um, there was a point a couple weeks ago where, <laughs> this might sound crazy, but the habitat team didn't know where one of the bears was at because it was in a den, but they didn't want to go um, looking into the den and disrupting the bear. Um, so on nice days, like, so warm today, but um, a couple days ago when it was warmer out, the bears were out and about, um, so the bears on grandfather still do get fed. Um, but depending, say in Florida, the bears will not go into any kind of, um, typically any turquoise or hibernation, not necessary. Up north, it's going to last longer, about six months. Um, here in North Carolina, roughly about three to four months that they could possibly be denning. But as we have seen, there's been changes in seasonal temperatures throughout, and that is affecting um, the time and the amount of time they stay in that suspended state. Um, and also affects their food as well um, before they go into that state. Can you describe a den? Like, is it something they make, like a bird's make a nest or something? Yeah, so there's all different types of dens. They can be in hollow out trees. They can, um, I've never seen it, but get a brush pile and go into that. They can go into human made structures that are already a den. Um, rock cavities are another type of den they can go into as well. Um, did I say hollow out trees? I believe I said that. Um, And then some open ground nests. So it really depends on their habitat. Um, bears, like I said earlier, they can live just about anywhere, um, but they do prefer to be in a more forested area, um, better chance of denning. And then on the East Coast, not much of a problem, but to um, get away from predators as well, a bear can climb a um, hundred feet up in a tree in about 30 seconds. Um, oh my God. I know, wow. that would take me forever. <laughs> oh. um, so does that help? It's basically, um, it's almost like housing. I, so I just came from Asheville not too long ago, but it's like housing in Asheville. You take what you get. Um, <laughs> grab it quick. Um, does that help answer your question then? Yeah, I was just wondering if they collect things and pad the walls. Oh, and like make it homey. They don't do that to insulate themselves or... I'm actually not I mean, sure. Do you? Okay. I'm just calling on Sue. I don't think that most bears do. I don't think so. Okay. Some, some I was just curious. Like, lay down some pine branches, but most bears are pretty well insulated when they go into torpor. Okay. Okay. 
I wonder though if they seek out dens particularly for that, like more cushion. I'll have to look into that. That's a good question. No, oh, that's great. I'm curious as well. The wild bears, do they have the same den for life in the same area, or do they like to wander to different areas? So, bears, they don't have territories like some other animals. They do have a home range. Um, females' home range can be up to 50 miles, and a male's home range can be up to 300 miles. Wow. Um, so I don't know, I don't want to give you false information. I don't think they um, say this is my assigned den. Um, just things could happen, the tree could get blocked off, the man-made structure can get um, ruined or such. So I don't think they rely on having the same den, but that's not to mean they don't go back to the den. Um, it might also depend on the food source in the area as well. Um, but I don't think it's a necessarily, this is my den. Um, because on Grandfather, like I said, the habitat team kind of sneaks around because they don't know which den um, the bear is currently in. When I mean sneak around, there's a <laughs> Just touch on it briefly, um, bears are opportunistic eaters. Um, they omnivores which I encourage you all later to come up. These are not all bear skulls, but just test your knowledge and see which one you can describe as a bear skull based on the information that I'm providing. They are omnivores. Um, basically, in the spring months, they eat mostly plants. Um, in the summer, berries and insects. And then in the fall, a lot of berries and then nuts um, to provide that substance when they go into their denning. Um, most of their diet is 75% um, plants. Um, but they're, like I said, they're opportunistic eaters, so they'll eat basically anything you provide. Um, their diet is a little different than our good friend Mildred, um, which we can, you're more than welcome to come up after. Mildred really enjoyed uh, Big Newtons and orange <laughs> soda. Uh, and on the mountain previously, if you were there a while back, you could feed the bears. Um, I was not, was any, has anyone fed the bears on grandfather? No. Yeah, would you like to tell about that experience at all? Uh, it was pretty interesting. I grew up with Mildred. Oh and my so, gosh. Yeah, and yeah. so all her cubs. She was never scared to bring her cubs around. She would pose with you in pictures. Mm -hmm. and, um, you could get really close to her and her cubs, which was surprising. But yeah. it was fun, a lot of fun. So um, the bears on the mountain, whether it, they might like it, but they don't get fig newtons in uh, orange soda anymore. I'm sure it goes against some regulation. Um, but they get um, they get switch up in their diet, so they don't get bored. So they get a lot of cool things, um, and it's an enrichment. So the habitats team does foraging with them by throwing some pellets out of the ground so they have to forage for the food and such um, as well. So, all right. Um, lastly, we'll hear talk a little about coexistence. It's a big thing, especially in this area. Um, I found this quote by biologist Stephen, please correct me if I pronounce his name wrong, but Herrero. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to mispronounce anyone's name, but there's, quote, there's no question that it's possible for people and bears to coexist without serious problems if we're willing to manage our food and garbage. Um, so like I said earlier, bears are extremely intelligent. Um, if they find a food source, they'll remember where that food source is unless they get scared away, um, which is why we're seeing them a lot in towns and communities they find that food source, but are not getting scared away, so they're coming back. Um, so would anyone like to share maybe what your community does, um, if you're local, and then we can, I can give you some tips about how we can prevent bears from coming into our personal, personal space, even though Mildred thought that was a great idea. 
the communities around here, if anyone would like to share what they do for bear, bear awareness? Our neighborhood um, really encourages us to have bear-proof garbage cans, mm -hmm. and they also impose a fine on anybody who puts a garbage can out or has it around their house, not bear-proof, um, and if they scatter the garbage uh, all over the place, which they do, mm -hmm. um, they get fined. In yeah. Neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What makes it bear-proof? What makes it bear proof? There's a locking system that I'm not sure how it works, but it is, there's a locking system that they literally cannot maneuver. I was saying the ones that are like um, small storage units mm -hmm. that lock, and so it will lift at the top when you unlock it, and they may be able to get in, but it discourages them up at Beach Mountain in the mm -hmm. uh, homeowners area there. Okay. I know at grandfather we do have the bear can not bear cans, the trash cans outside where you have to undo the latch to pull them up. Um, anyone else? Thanks for sharing. And I guess the Tola they've got their um, trash um, cylinders at ground level. Mm -hmm. He does oh. step on it and it opens so that may be difficult. Huh, I, I don't know if I've ever saw this or grasped it. I think one of the biggest attractions, that you may have mentioned this earlier, is bird feed. Mm -hmm. So you'll have some in your backyard if you feed birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every day on Grandfather, we put the bird feeders out, and every day we bring them back in. There was, um, so the construction at the museum right now, um, it's closed off now, but we have our birds feed in big containers, um, like the tin trash cans. Um, basically for smaller rodent populations, but we did have a resident wild bear that figured out, I think the door was like this big to get through where the construction was, and it shimmied its way in, and uh, obviously found the bird seed, but you could see its tracks on the carpet. Um, but yeah, bringing in bird seed, um, another big one, and it's something that, you know, I didn't even really, I thought about but didn't put too much thought into it or making sure the grills are really your grill outside is really clean as well mm -hmm. um just something i mean i grew up in pennsylvania and everyone i mean grilling is very popular but no one cleaned their grill um and then enclosing the compost as well are just some great ideas um if you do happen to see a bear in your area um just make yourself big, uh, make yourself loud. Um, I recently listened to some ideas about bear bells, how they're not actually helpful, but could be harmful, not harmful, but not have any effect, um, just with the frequency of the bear bells. So I think they're still looking into research, and maybe someone in this room's heard otherwise, but from a recent research paper I read that bear bells were not effective, but just making yourself loud and big, um, they don't want anything to do with us unless they're with their cubs, and it's just for protection. Have you um, heard about the whistles, the bear whistles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the frequency, I don't know, um, I think they're looking into it. It's like something that just might not be enough to actually frighten them. Um, but anything you have to make noise, it's not going to hurt by any means. So if you have a whistle or you, my keys that jingle while I'm walking, um, anything like that, just to make, make yourself um, present in, in their country. We, I just always tell myself, it's their home, all right? It's not my home. Um, I'm the one that came in here and built this, or I didn't build anything, but came in here and on their territory. So just some things to think about. Well, that's all I have for you all today. Um, I do encourage you all, if you have questions, and Bram's okay with me hanging out to answer, I'm already over. <laughs> um, to answer some questions, um, anything I didn't cover that I can um, ask the Habitats team 
Um, yeah. You probably know. Are you going to have, are you, are you expecting cubs this season or no? No, we no longer breed on the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, that's with all of our animals too on the mountain. Um, no breeding. But are we on like birth control or something? <laughs> yeah, right. I was wondering how to use uh, Yeah, right. <laughs> well, they don't go on the website. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Um, they do, I believe Cody is fixed. Uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, all of our bears are pushing like 20, 25, 25. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not interested in it. That was the best <laughs> <laughs> um, So no longer breeding, just with the population bounce back. Um, they haven't bred. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you might might want to mention also people are asking, you know, uh, uh, what happens when you encounter bears in the wild. Oh yeah. Well, one of the things is that bears have the best sense of smell of any land mammal. Mm -hmm. Bears can smell up to a mile away. But when I'm, when I'm talking to the kids up at Grandfather, I always say, remember when you came in the gate, which is about a mile down the road, is that if you, you know, unwrapped your cheeseburger at the museum, mm -hmm. if a bear was standing at the gate waiting to get in, that bear would smell that cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. So they could smell you way before they ever see you. And if you're not, you know, if you're cooking cheeseburgers, they might come and visit you, but if you just smell like a human, they're going to go the other way. Yeah. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but their smell is seven times greater than that of a bloodhound. Oh, wow. Seven, seven thousand times better than us. Yeah. 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 yeah they're, they're pretty huh. amazing. Yeah. Maybe that's why we have to make bears in Pennsylvania. My mom's cooking was. <laughs> Make it a little less desirable than the cheeseburgers at Mildred's Grill. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Um, does anyone, hopefully I answered some questions. If I didn't, please let me know. And like I said, maybe I can get some, if you feel comfortable, if you don't, by all means, send some information to you once I know more um, so I can help you out. Um, but I do encourage y'all can. These I found yesterday, they're very fun. And the old uh, photos down in our office, if you want to come look at some of these pictures, these ones are all of Mildred on the mountain and her cubs. Um, and then these magazines are, Hugh Morton created them. Um, just some real historic pictures of the bears on the mountain. So I encourage you all, if you. If you feel, we can spread them out, and I'll put my mask back on um, to make you all feel as comfortable as possible. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for your time.